At last, I am free. At last, I am free. My dear fellow humans, at last I am free. At last I am free. I am free at last. I've been a devout Muslim all my life. There were situations where I questioned my faith, but I still came back being more devout. But now, at last, I can say with all dignity that I have, that I am free. This claim of freedom is just a slogan. What exactly does it mean? Nothing. Okay, it has a ring of superficial truth to it. But in reality, if you think about it, it's an empty slogan. Islam is all about encouraging spirituality whilst giving a framework for this spirituality to flourish. So an example of a facet of this framework would be the prohibition of destroyers of spirituality such as alcohol, drugs, overeating, backbiting, gambling and pornography. So what exactly is this man free from? Free from a religion that prescribes God consciousness, i.e. spirituality, and restrictions slash prohibitions on base indulgences? Is that really something to celebrate or slogan here? But now, at last, I can say with all dignity that I have, that I am free. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, in his article, covers this concept of freedom indirectly. At one point in his article, he starts listing ailments that we in the West are facing, one, one of which being rates of depressive illness and stress-related syndromes having rocketed, especially among the youth. So after listing all those ailments that our society is facing, he goes on to state, none of this should surprise us. This is what a society built on materialism, individualism and moral relativism looks like. It maximizes personal freedom. Again, this goes back to what the gentleman was sloganeering. It maximizes personal freedom, but at a cost. As Michael Walzer puts it, this freedom Energizing and exciting as it is, is also profoundly disintegrative, making it very difficult for individuals to find any stable community support, very difficult for any community to count on the responsible participation of its individual members. It opens solitary men and women to the impact of a lowest common denominator, commercial culture. Now think about how profound this discussion is compared to the empty sloganeering of the irreligious camp. Throwing aside religion doesn't automatically mean you have freedom because that void will be filled by, as Rabbi Jonathan Sachs mentions, materialism, individualism and moral relativism. And in turn, in turn, that would lead somebody effectively to become a slave to commercial culture. Who wants to be a slave to commercial culture? This idea of freedom is not really freedom. It's a nightmare. Who wants to be a slave to moral relativism? I mean, there's no absolutes in that worldview. Materialism, individualism, come on. This doesn't help society. Again, it's not freedom. It's a nightmare. We can glean a few other pertinent points from Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. He goes on to cite the historian Will Durant, there is no significant example in history before our time of a society successfully maintaining moral life without the aid of religion. Now think about this. We've heard superficial sloganeering of freedom, but in reality, what the, what the irreligious camp are doing is they are championing the destruction of society. They're promoting something, a quote-unquote freedom, that does not aid society. In effect, it's going to destroy. Rabbi goes on to state, I have not yet found a secular ethic capable of sustaining in the long run a society of strong communities and families on the one hand. Altruism just refers to helping others whilst putting yourself out. Virtue, self-restraint, honour, 
obligation and trust on the other. If you think about this deeply, rather than being caught in superficial sloganeering, you'll recognise that sloganeering is calling for the death of a society. It's not going to aid a society. I was told that if the follower is doing something wrong, don't blame the religion. If the driver is failing in his, um, in his driving, don't blame the manual. But when the manual is producing failed drivers time and time after and in tons and numbers, there's something wrong with the manual itself. Is there anything There's positive about? Is there anything, Robert? The is, excuse me. Is there anything positive about Islam you could say? There, uh, Islam makes a lot of people be very moral and upright and live fine lives. That's good, right? And that wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be true of most Muslims? I would certainly say so. Yeah, and never have denied it. I am free at last. We didn't reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that to his prophet. We did not re re reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. The, the mukhalifa, the understanding, the reverse understanding is anzalnahu li tas'ad. We, we revealed this book to make you happy. So if Islam is not making you happy, something's wrong with your Islam. And if you're making other people unhappy, you know, woe unto you for driving people out of Islam. You know, and there are people that are driving people away from Islam. And this is, we're in the end game, people. I mean, if you don't see that, I don't know what planet you're living on. We're coming down to end game. Maybe it's 100 years from now, maybe it's 200, I don't know. Those things are in the knowledge of God. But our Prophet said, I was sent and, and the end of time are like these two. And he put his wuspa and his sababa together, just like that. I was sent and the hour is like this. That was 1400 years ago. And in terms of how long humans have been here, it's not a long time, 1400 years. It's, a, it's a, just a flash. So this is a time for people to have a lot of rahab, you know, just expansiveness in their hearts for people. Baza, Baza, I wish I could quote it in, in Persian, but you know, we're in the city of Mawlana, Jalaluddin, and he, he has a beautiful qasida which is in the entrance to his maqam. Come, come again. <laughs> you know, whatever you've done, This isn't a caravan of despair. You know, sinner, if you've broken your vow a thousand times, just come back. <laughs> the door's open. And anybody that closes it is a shaitan. You know, and there's people closing that door on people that need to hear that message. You know, because this world can defile you, but no matter how defiled you are, Allah's door is open. No matter what's happened to you, Allah's door is open. I mean, we have testimony in the hadith to a mass murderer who was given Tawbah. He killed a hundred people and he was given Tawbah. This door is open and people, we need to open it up and let people come in with all their faults and all their flaws 
and all their dysfunctionalities and all their problems. Just open the door and let people come in.